Tonight we are talking about spiritual authority. We are finishing our sermon series on spiritual authority. This is part six. Tonight we're going to talk about pulling down strongholds. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to talk first about the first uh, five pillars of truth regarding spiritual authority. Sort of a review of what we talked about in the previous five weeks. The five pillars of truth regarding spiritual authority. In other words, the things that spiritual, our spiritual authority is founded upon. You know we have spiritual authority over sin, over sickness, over situations, over Satan, over self, over circumstance. Come on now. Amen. Well, I want you to know that there's five reasons for that. And the first one is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It declares, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. The ambassador is the one who speaks for the king and the kingdom. The ambassador is the one who promotes the policies of the kingdom. The ambassador is the one who represents the culture of the kingdom. And therefore, the ambassador has the full weight and backing of the kingdom. The full force of the kingdom backs up the ambassador. Because the kingdom wants the ambassador to know that when he is speaking, he is speaking with the authority and the backing of the kingdom that he is speaking for. Come on, say amen. amen. So the first reason that we have spiritual authority is because we are citizens of the kingdom. Not just citizens of the kingdom. We are ambassadors of the kingdom. And as ambassadors of the kingdom, the kingdom backs us up. That's why Jesus said, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. We have the authority to use the name of the king because we speak for the king. We represent the king. We promote the policies of the king. So number one, the reason we have spiritual authority is because we are ambassadors in the kingdom. Number two, the reason we have spiritual authority is that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are told in Ephesians 1 and 21 that Jesus is crowned. Jesus is coronated. Jesus is enthroned in heavenly places, seated on the right hand of power that he is seated far above all principality and power and, and might and dominion and every name that is named. And then when you go to the next chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says that we were raised with him and we were made to sit with him in heavenly places. Where, where, well, where does he sit in heavenly places? Far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named. So if we are seated in him and that makes sense we're in the body of Christ we are the body of Christ that means that we are seated above all principality and power might and dominion in every name that is named come on church amen so the first reason we have power and authority is that we are ambassadors of Christ second reason that we have power and authority is that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above might and power and dominions and authority the third reason that we have spiritual authority as believers is that the cross has restored that authority to us look in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 Jesus disarmed principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Well, when did he do that? Look in the previous verse, at the cross. In verse 14, it says, at the cross, Jesus did this. He disarmed principalities and power. Well, when he disarmed them, he armed us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he took their power away, we received his power. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can I read it again? He disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them. He triumphed over them in it. So number one, we're ambassadors. Number two, we're seated with Christ. Number three, the cross disarmed our enemy. And through the cross, we are armed. Number four, we are made in the image of God having authority. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. 
God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb and yielding seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself. So everything reproduces after its kind. Then God, in verse 26, said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Why would man have dominion? Because God is a God of dominion. And we're being made in His image and in His likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish, over the birds, over the cattle, over all the earth, every living, every creeping thing that creeps in the earth. So we were created in the image of God to have authority because God has authority. Now Jesus restored that authority when He came and restored the kingdom. Glory to God. The fifth reason that we have spiritual authority is because in the commission of Christ, there is authority through the anointing. When Jesus commissioned the twelve, he said, I give you authority over devils. When he commissioned the seventy, he says, I give you authority over the devils and over all the power of the enemy and by no, uh, nothing shall by any means hurt you. When he commissioned the church, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so we have, by way of commission, we have authority invested into us. That's why Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from all on high. Then in Acts 1 and 8 he says when you receive power, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. So with the commission comes the anointing. With the anointing comes the power and the presence of God in our life over all the workings of the enemy. Acts 10 and 38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So with the anointing comes power over oppression. With the anointing comes power over all of the influence and the effects of the devil. So I say, thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the commission. So let me review this real quick. We have spiritual authority because we are ambassadors of Christ. We have spiritual authority because we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We have spiritual authority because the cross has taken authority away from the devil and has invested authority in the believer. We have spiritual authority because we are created in the image of God and God creates things after its own kind. We have spiritual authority because we are commissioned. We are commissioned with power and anointed by the Spirit to walk that commission out. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we have authority over sin. We have authority over Satan. We have authority over sickness. We have authority over self, the flesh. We have authority over circumstance. We have authority over strongholds. And that's what I want to talk about tonight as we finish up this series on spiritual authority. We have authority over strongholds. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. What a powerful revelation. Now, let's look at it in the New Living Translation. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and we teach them to obey Christ. 
So when you're talking about strongholds, you're talking about the strongholds of the mind. You're talking about strongholds of human reasoning, strongholds of false, doc, uh, false arguments, strongholds of high-mindedness, strongholds of rebellious thoughts, and also the strongholds of doubt and unbelief and fear and worry and anxiety and all the other things that wants to grip our thinking and keep us from walking in victory and success in the Lord. Now, they're called strongholds for a reason, because there is a sense of impermeability. There is a sense of being fixed. They are, every castle that you've ever seen is designed to keep things out that want to get in. And strongholds are designed to keep the Word of God, to keep the wisdom of God, to keep the revelation of God out and to stick with a certain frame uh, uh, of set of thinking that will keep you locked into a certain behavior and keep victory out of your life. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. A stronghold, turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 5. A stronghold is a mindset. Romans 8 and 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death, but you can be spiritually minded. So the pattern that we see here is that you have a mindset or a stronghold. A mindset produces an attitude. An attitude produces a behavior. A behavior produces a pattern. A pattern produces a habit. A habit produces a stronghold. A stronghold produces death. Now, it's not physical death, but it can be the death of your hopes and your dreams and your desires. It can be the death of your God-given purpose. And so there's this whole progression that just starts with the thought life. You have a belief. A belief turns into an attitude. An attitude turns into a behavior. A behavior turns into a pattern. A pattern turns into a habit. A habit turns into a stronghold. And at the end of all that, something has died. God's plan for your life. Hope, joy, peace. Something has died if you're carnally minded. But we can be spiritually minded. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, there's two experiences with the stronghold. There are strongholds that we are aware of. There's strongholds that we're not aware of. There's things that we, we know about, we wrestle about, we, we experience them. There, there's things that, that are troubling to us on the inside. None of us are perfect. Come on. I said none of us are perfect. We're all dealing with stuff. Welcome to the human race. We're all dealing with stuff. And there's things that we're aware of. But then there's the things that we have no idea about, but everybody else is aware of. Uh, we call them blind spots. Things that we just keep repeating behaviors and attitudes in our life that we go through in our lives that we're not aware of, but other people are probably aware of them. Come on, say amen. 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 Joyce Meyer says you cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. Zig Ziglar says we need, we need to be cured from our stinking thinking. We need a, a checkup from the neck up. Uh, there's, there's things that we've got to get right according to the Word of God. And the goal is, the goal is to bring our thoughts into a captivity and into the obedience of Christ. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ." Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Going back to our text verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are mighty. Our weapons are mighty in God. 
Our weapons are mighty enough to pull down the strongholds. There's not a stronghold that cannot be pulled down. It's not that we're going to try in the flesh. We're going to do it in the spirit. Every stronghold of thought, every stronghold of the, that the enemy has set up in our life can be pulled down because the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. There is no area of our life that we cannot have victory. The weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. And so... We need a supernatural solution. They're mighty in God. That's the answer. They're mighty in God. We need a godly answer. We need a godly solution to the strongholds that affect our life. The strongholds of fear. The strongholds of doubt. The strongholds of worry and, and so forth. There's a God answer to all those things. Well, what are our weapons in God that are mighty? Number one... We have the weapons of His Spirit, we have the weapons of His Word, we have the weapons of His grace, and we have the weapons of His church. Amen. The weapons of the Spirit, of the Word, of His grace, and of His church. Turn with me to Psalms 139, verse 23. Psalm 139, verse 23. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. Verse 24, see if there is any strongholds in me. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, try me, know my heart, know my thoughts. See if there's anything in me that I should be dealing with. Amen. Reveal it to me, Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit is to bring things to light in our lives. Romans 8 and 26 says, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. For he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so when we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is making intercession within us and He is revealing things to us. Now, I don't know if you've ever operated this way, but when I pray in the Spirit, I ask God for the interpretation of the prayer. I want to know what's going on in my life. And so when I pray in the Spirit, I take time for the Holy Spirit just to bring things up, to reveal things to me, to let me know the prayers that have just been lifted up in my spirit. And it is amazing what God will reveal to you. Things that you were not aware of. I said, things that you were not aware of that the Holy Spirit can make you aware of. And so the first weapon of our warfare is the Holy Spirit. I said, is the Holy Spirit. And so you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost. You need to be worshiping in the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, The garment of praise lifts the spirit of heaviness. Those strongholds begin to give away when you start worshiping in the Spirit. You start praying in the Spirit because it rewires your thinking. It rewires your perspective. It changes your attitude, the way you look at things. So the garment of praise lifts up the spirit or removes the spirit of heaviness so the first weapon of our warfare in God is the spirit of God the second weapon of our warfare in God is the word of God turn with me to Psalms 119 and 28 New Living Translation I weep with sorrow encourage me by your word keep me from lying to myself Give me the privilege of knowing your instruction. You see what the Word does, He reveals. The Word reveals any, any thought life in us that is wrong. It's not according to the Word. I cannot tell you in my 30 plus years of Christian life that I've been sitting under the Word, whether I'm sitting in a church service or I'm listening to it on tape or television or YouTube now or whatever it might be, and the, I'll hear the Word being ministered and something will go off on the inside of me and I'll say, that's right, 
That's right. I need to line up with that. I need to shift with that a little bit. I need to make sure that I'm in agreement with that because that's the word of God. And there's so very often that we can lie to ourselves and convince ourselves of something that just is not word is not God's will for our life. And yet we lie to ourselves about it. But the word says, encourage me by your word, O Lord. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. Mark, 20, uh, Mark 4 and 21. Then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and put it under the basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. The lamp of God's word in our life. Verse 22, for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought open and every secret will be brought to light. Those deep and, and hidden things in our heart. The word illuminates them in our heart and we begin to realize, you know what, that's right. That's got to change. Now, I've got to shift my thinking regarding that. Verse 25, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Say, I've got ears to hear. I Say, I've got ears to hear. Oh, yes, I do. So. Number one, the weapon of our warfare is mighty in God. That is the Spirit of God. Number two, the weapon of our warfare indeed is the Word of God. Number three, the weapons of our warfare, mighty in God, is the grace of God. Grace is the enabling power of God. It is often defined as, as unmerited favor, but it is also defined as the enabling power of God or the divine influence of God upon the heart of man. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 do you remember Paul talking about the thorn that was in his flesh it was the enemy that had come to buffet him to limit his ministry to hem him in as it were and Paul said God I need you to remove this thorn and he prayed that prayer three times and God answered him in verse 9 of 2nd Corinthians 12 and God said my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness therefore most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me my grace is sufficient the grace of God is the enabling power of God. We could not have been saved if it were not for the grace of God. Well, the same power that got us saved, that transformed us from dead spiritually to alive spiritually, that's the same power that delivers us. That's the same power that enables us. It's the grace. And I say we need more grace in our life. I said we need more grace in our life Amen. praise the Lord so grace we're dependent on the grace of God the enabling power of God the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold and I want to close on this last fourth weapon of warfare and that is the church the body of Christ talked about the Spirit of God we talked about the Word of God we talked about the grace of God now let's talk about the church of God in this closing thought turn with me to Proverbs 24 and verse 6 a stronghold is a system of thought that is not in agreement with the Word of God it's it's a uh, it's a fear it's a worry it's concern it can be perpetual it can be years or decades old in your life it's a stronghold it's been something that's been set up and fixed uh, it's a mindset that's been in operation in our lives uh, for for a long long time um, if you've ever seen the castles of Scotland England France and uh, Europe they're they're absolutely amazing and they're beautiful but they've been there for 1500 years they're strongholds uh, because the way they were built they were built to last even those that have been bombed out during wars even those that have suffered some uh, form of erosion over time there's still the structure there you can still see them and, and pick out how the castle uh, stood up on the bluff or up on the cliff or the mountain or whatever it was 
and you say, you know what? That thing is 1,500 years old and I can still see that it is a castle and it still looks strong. There's things that can be in our life for a long, long, long period of time because it's built up a resistance to new ways of thinking. It's built up a resistance to new ways of thinking. So what I'm saying is um, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the grace of God can change a man. Absolutely. We saw it change Paul on the Damascus Road. Amen. Praise the Lord. But sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes a while to take that castle down. Amen. Sometimes there, you know, to, to level that thing down to the ground and root it up and get it out and get it gone. Sometimes that just takes a little while. Proverbs 24 and 6. For by wise counsel you will wage your own war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Sometimes we need to align with those in the body of Christ that can speak wisely into our lives, that have our, our concern, our care and concern in their heart, and they want to see us succeed and do well. Those that have a, a, a pastoral anointing, want to get us into green pastures, want to get us over the Jordan, into the promised land. And sometimes it is so helpful to be able to sit down with folks that have been where you are or want to encourage you through the moment and just want to get you into a good place and past where you are stuck. Sometimes we just get stuck. Sometimes we do, and it's hard to get past it. But there's anointed ministers, there's anointed people of God that can speak into our life and help us get over that hurdle, help us get that stronghold broken, that grip broken, so you can begin moving into the blessings and the promises of God. By wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in the multitude of counsels, their counselors, there is safety. Now, I say this with reservation because you can't just go to anybody and share your heart. Not everybody's anointed for that. And not everybody will treat your heart properly. Not everybody will honor your heart and value your heart uh, properly. And so you need to go to those who are anointed, who are called, who are committed to your betterment. And those are few and far between. But we can, we can line you up and we can help you with that. And so you do have mighty weapons of warfare. You have the Spirit of God. You have the Word of God. You have the grace of God. And you have the church of God. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Praise God. Amen.